Uh, welcome, um, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Thompson. I'm from Center for Teaching Excellence, and I'm just going to walk through some of the um, um, housekeeping uh, pieces around um, Microsoft Teams. First and foremost, welcome to day number three of EdTech Week. Pretty excited if, if you've experienced some other um, sessions. I'm sure they're awesome and there's more to come. A few things on, on Teams. The controls at the top are what we're using. Apologies for those that have seen this before, but we want to make sure everyone's on the same page. The little chat icon is a speech bubble. It could be the square looking icon or a round speech bubble, depending on your version you have. Um, use that when you're participating and at any time put a question in there during this session and uh, whoever's not speaking, Victoria or myself, will try to answer it. Um, when it comes time, if you do want to speak or if we need no more clarification, we'll ask you to unmute and, and, and then you can share your screen as well. But on that note, uh, we want to point out that this workshop will be recorded. Um, and on that secondary piece to that is we're um, going to be harvesting all of these and putting them into the uh, CTE um, YouTube channel. And so we'll provide links to those uh, at the end of EdTech Week. Secondarily, uh, this is a great feature. Uh, Microsoft Teams of all the, the synchronous uh, platforms that we've been using here on campus seems to be really good on the accessibility front. And here's an example. The little ellipses beside the, the um, camera and mic, um, if you click on that down arrow, you'll see the option for turning on live captions. So it'll be speaking even with my bubbly speak. You'll see something captured there, I'm sure. Um, so that's a little piece about uh, that. And with uh, with that in mind, as we mentioned earlier, asking you to raise your hand if you do want to speak out, and then we'll un uh, unmute and away you go. We'll ask everyone to keep muted while we're uh, while we're going uh, uh, forward. And right over to Victoria. Thanks, Jason. Uh, so welcome everybody to Bongo Two. This is about the Q and A and interactive video assignment types. Um, your hosts today are myself, Victoria Fest. I am a liaison with CTE to the Faculty of Arts. And joining me, as you already know, is Jason Thompson, Faculty Liaison to Science. Great. So before we plunge into the specifics of these two assignment types, we're just going to back up a little bit and uh, clarify some of the language that we are doing our best to use when speaking about um, Learn, Bongo, and the different assignment types that are available. So Bongo is actually the vendor, um, and the virtual classroom and video assignment are products that are integrated into Learn. So Jason and I are going to try our hardest to say either virtual classroom or video assignment to distinguish the tools that are available in Learn rather than saying Bongo, because that can mean um, a lot of things. And uh, on the note of using Bongo or Learn video assignment and virtual classroom, um, using Firefox or Chrome are the more most effective browsers. So if you are a Safari person um, or still using Internet Explorer, those won't give you the best experience. So there are four assignment types um, available through the video assignments in Learn. And some of you may have attended this morning's Bongo One session, which covered the first two, which are the individual project and the group project assignment types. Uh, this afternoon, Jay and I are going to talk specifically about the question and answer and interactive video assignment types. Uh, and just a reminder to find these things in Learn, which we will get everybody practicing with real soon, uh, you will find the virtual classroom under connect. We're not talking about virtual classroom at all, but just to differentiate um, the products again, that's under connect. And you will find the video assignment under submit in Learn. So um, by the end of the session today, it is our hope that you will be able to complete a Q&A and interactive video, video assignment um, in the student role so that you have the same user experience that your students will have when they get to try this out if you choose to implement it in your course. And we also hope that you'll get to create 
um, at least one of the two video assignment types as instructors and learning designers. And finally, in closing, we're, we're aiming to identify whether or how these assignment types can enhance your students' experience, um, whether you're thinking ahead to the blended future when we're back on campus or in the online learning experience. And I'm going to pass back to Jay, and he's going to talk about the Q&A assignment type. Great. Thanks, Victoria. Uh, you'll notice that Victoria and I refer to each other with our first initials, so I'll call her V sometimes. She'll call me Jay. Um, also, I'm going to ask uh, Brianna maybe to take a tally uh, for each time we say bongo instead of video assignment or, or what have you. We'll tally it and then, uh, you know, V and I can settle up at the grad house if and when we ever get there. Yeah? I'm on <laughs> like, it. <laughs> like a swear jar. Anyway. Q&A assignment type. So um, this assignment type, um, oh, I always forget, I have to take control. Um, so this, uh, oops, here we go. This assignment type um, allows you to present prompts either in text or video to, to students, to the learner, and then they have a certain amount of time to reply to or respond to those um, prompts. You can do up to 20 questions in one uh, video assignment Q&A. And uh, just a note about the max and min times, well, min time is uh, is one second, for example, but the max can be up to 7,200 seconds. So <laughs> that's 120 minutes. Maybe you want to do a PhD dissertation through this, I'm not sure. But the point there is there's a lot of room for min and max, set it at one or two minutes to five minutes, depending if it's a case-based scenario versus just a simple uh, prompt Q&A. Learners typically only have one opportunity to answer each prompt. So um, that is a, a default setting uh, on purpose by, by Bongo, the company, not, not a tally mark, for this video assignment because they're looking to replicate the high stakes um, situation. Some examples would be a language practice. When you hear something you respond to, we'll show you in a, a concrete example of that after the student experience. Um, clinical scenario is a good one. A practitioner with uh, with a uh, patient or client where the patient and client presents something and the practitioner has to respond. And that would be great for our optom and our uh, pharmacy folks for sure, as well as others. Interview, debate, etc. So it's setting up that skills demonstration piece. That said, it's a default, and we can take that off as well. Um, a few things I'm going to take you through for the student's inner space, two, three slides, and then you're going to be doing the student piece, because really that's all we have to say about Bongo. Oops, there it is. I got one, tally. Um, the video assignment. So when uh, a learner starts the Q&A assignment, they will pre be presented, as you will see, with this screen, and all they have to do is activate the recorder. Uh, so that's a simple process. And when they do, they'll see those two check marks. Then they can start the question and go through the prompts as they go forward. Uh, once they click that start, uh, on the left side is the view of the student. On the right side is the question. So in this case, it's a text question. If it was a video question, it would be there. They'd play it. It would be playing, sorry, and then the text would be at the bottom. It shows them a, a countdown, and right now it's at three seconds, and it'll go three, two, one. That's if you set a delay. You'll see that as you go forward uh, in the student and the, and the other experience. Oh, I'm breaking up. That's not good. Sorry about that. Um, not sure how I can change that. I don't have much else on. Maybe I will do this. Boop. Jay, I can hear you OK, so it might just be individual internet connections, unfortunately. OK. Thanks. I will. Uh, I will try to uh, slow up there a bit, Lori. So, um, the 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 delay that happens there, uh, the three, two, one, or the eight seconds, or whatever you set the delay as, at any point the student can click record, and then they can um, they can uh, start right away if they would like. So um, I just there we go. Once they click the record button. The learner has a limited time, so you'll set that max points. And in this example, you'll see one minute max, um, and it counts up now 19 seconds, 20, 21, until they get to the allotted time. Once they reach that time, it stops the, the recording. So uh, if they finish beforehand, they can click stop um, on their own accord and then move on to the next question. That's a brief nutshell. And 
we're going to try it as a student right now. So uh, before we leave anywhere, we have a few things to say, but we're going to get you to go to learn. Uh, we are going to ask you to go to the content area and to the Q&A video assignment module, and it looks like this. So on the right side, when you get to the Learn EdTech site, you're all enrolled as students currently. Uh, the link is just put in, I think, yeah, V just put it in the chat as well. Click on content, go to the uh, module on the left, and then on the right side, you'll see the link to the activity. Two things you need to know. We're going to ask you to uh, make sure you keep the camera off like you do in uh, Teams and mute in Teams. That way you'll be able to enable the uh, camera and um, mic for the activity. We will be monitoring chat and we'll call you back in five minutes. So once you go there, content, module, and activity, you'll be flying through the activity yourself. Please let us know any questions in the in the chat. Okay, off you go, and we'll call you back at, um, yeah, we'll check in on you at about uh, 17 after. Well, uh, thanks everyone, hope that, uh, uh, worked out well for some of us and like I said for those that uh, have difficulty that's what we get with these virtual things so we'd be happy to help you after the fact no problem uh, the submit button is probably why it's a process uh, uh, progress absolutely so um, with the video stuff if you did a minute or a half even if you did 30 seconds there's processing time so we'll, we'll follow up on that too um, as we go forward uh, some of the questions that we have, and we're hoping that you can actually ask for those that were successful at it, at least based on your experience as a student, what do you think your students will need to know or what kind of questions will they have maybe before, during or after? We kind of left it and pushed you into it. How'd that feel? Any thoughts? Confusing, couldn't figure out how to get my mic on at first. And some students may have privacy concerns. Absolutely. So um, this piece uh, will show you an example in the um, uh, where some people will do it and they have them block off their camera and they just do the audio. But um, that's a choice piece, uh, Amanda, that we could talk about. Now, uh, couldn't get on your mic. Sometimes there's a browser piece there. When they do activate, um, uh, the camera, the prompt should come from your computer to say, allow the mic, because as soon as you do that, it calls to your computer mic and camera. And so if you're not seeing that, that's a setting on either the browser or something in the computer, or it's engaged with another activity. Um, so an example in this case, we asked you, uh, I think once or twice anyway, to make sure your camera was off and you were muted here. That deactivates its use in Teams. But if they're active in Teams and trying to do use the mic elsewhere, it'll be a conflict because it's already being used. So there's one piece that we need to, um, to know. Uh, interesting, had to speak to activate it. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Awesome. Um, so, Part of what I think we want you to experience by just going head deep is if you have an activity that is of the high stakes nature, and even if it's worth a small amount of, of percentage, you know, two, five percent, whatever it is, if they add up, if you do it over the course of a term or what have you, always, always, always a great idea to have a sort of practice run with it. Um, do a small little activity to get them warmed up, make sure everything's working, and that activation um, process is the biggest hurdle that we found as well. Anything to add there, V, before we uh, go on, or any other questions you see in the chat that I might have missed? Um, just to reinforce the idea of um, creating a practice assignment, I know instructors using this type of assignment or any of the other video assignment types often um, have a practice version that just gets students uh, familiar with it and then they have the um, actual for grades or for feedback version. Mm -hmm. Great. 
Um, so the submit button, we're going to take a look at that to make sure we did. I'm um, wondering about processing time. That might be the thing. If you go back to the assignment after we're done the session, you will you likely will see the submit button. It's a processing time. Um, again, some of these things we just pushed you into so you experience frustration. That's what your students will be experiencing. So i um, kind of glad we went through some of these things. Um, if it still says processing, then that indeed is it's it's working at getting that um, video done. So even small videos take a little time. Good. I'm going to go on to an example. Uh, oh, did I activate? Let's see. Got to activate. There we go. So here we have an example um, for an oral test in a, in uh, two Japanese courses, uh, and uh, we want to thank Fumi for sharing these things. Uh, she did a uh, she was very kind to share examples. She did uh, she did this over two terms, I believe. Um, here's an example of how she used the Q and A. She has a list of thirty questions that she gives to the students ahead of time, so they can practice these thirty and get them working on it. Um, she records only twenty of them. And then a setting you'll see when you're in the instructor mode, when you advance settings, you'll see the possibility to randomize. And she randomizes those 20 and takes 15 of those 20 for each student. So it helps a little further. So they study the 30, she asked 20, and then in fact only asked 15 for each student. Uh, during the test, the student listens um, and it's spoken aloud, the Japanese, and then they respond to it aloud. Um, the thing that you'll notice with uh, when you do a video assignment, it does require text. I think that's an accessibility thing as well. So that the text has to be there. Not to give away what is said orally, she uses a, an ingenious method of providing a code there that lets her know what question it is. So when she's grading, she doesn't have to look back at what question they're answering when they're responding. That little code lets her know what they're responding to. And that helped with her efficiency of marking. Um, oh, good news. My screen has updated to my submission. So that sounds like it worked, I think. Um, great. Next idea for this, uh, next piece to this example with the Japanese oral. Uh, students um, use the camera themselves. They don't do the camera and they don't share the screen. And it shows them exactly like we are chest up and whatnot. Uh, and they're told they can't um, use uh, aids or anything like that. Uh, she does tell them ahead of time to set the expectation that this will be uh, um, uh, uh, the process and that they only have one attempt to let them know there's no retake here. So practice, practice, practice. Uh, that expectation piece is very important. Uh, is that right? Yes. Uh, so just an example, when you get into settings in the instructor mode near the end of the session, um, camera only, no retake, you can do random. She did 15 of, no delay. We'll talk about that in a second. And then the max and min times was one to 20. There is peer review and um, self-assessment, but we're not going to talk about these in this session, but we have resources in our handouts that you can find more information for that. Some feedback from the instructor herself. Fumi liked the um, Q&A. Uh, she said bongo too, so we replaced that with video assignment. Uh, that's one tally for her, Brianna. Um, she liked it for the oral test because it enabled her to evaluate the students more effectively because she could re-listen and, and do it multiple times. So she found that to be a more accurate assessment of their oral Japanese. Um, also, she found that it was pretty simple for the students to take. So aside from the processing thing, I think other things were well. Once they know where the link is, uh, for those that didn't get that, we'll follow up afterwards. That's the hardest part um, we found. And then the processing for submission. The delay settings we want to talk about. Yes, I forgot about this piece. Um, need to be carefully determined. So essentially what we recommend here is take set up your, your um, Q&A, take it as a test student, see what that delay looks like. Do I know I have to, I can click the record or do I have to wait uh, the eight seconds that I made you wait on purpose, a little bit longer than it needed to be. Oh, I just biased my opinion there. Um, uh, and also, if it's too little, they'll start answering right away. So that countdown, the one minute max, and I think it was 19 in the second, just let them know. Make sure they see it start to count and then start the. It's OK if it's a pause of one second or two that they don't say anything. So that's a, a piece she learned that helped her for the next uh, session. 
the next term, pardon me. Student feedback, there wasn't any specific feedback about the Q&A video assignment itself. However, lots of positive comments in the remote setting with the ability to still evaluate these skills, these oral and listening skills. Uh, so bongo video assignment, um, Ooh, that's a half and half. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, the Q&A helped facilitate that in the remote setting. Um, I think Fumi is going to be using it even, uh, I'm going to say, when we get back to face to face. She's probably going to integrate it as well. Uh, Victoria works with her directly and is nodding. That's a nutshell of an example. Um, I think without further ado, we're halfway through the session and I think now it's time to have Victoria share interactive video. I'll take a look at the chat as we go further. Great. Thanks, Jay. So yeah, we're moving on to the interactive video assignment type. This will probably take a little bit less time only because uh, sadly we don't have any examples of instructors using it. In my experience, it is one of the underutilized options in the video assignments. So hopefully today will inspire you to give it a try if you think it would make your um, online or blended course more effective. So in the interactive video assignment, uh, learners watch an instructor provided video and they respond to related prompts. And you can have a maximum of 20 prompts strewn throughout the video in the specific places that you choose to add them. Uh, and the video can be something that you record directly into Bongo or that's something an MP4 file that you upload. So you'll see the example that we're going to have you do when I'm done talking for a bit is um, just a snippet of, uh, of poetry reading. So coming from a sort of uh, arts perspective, um, having students listen um, to someone read something and then check for understanding based on that reading. So some use cases that are uh, recommended by Bongo, and I do mean Bongo <laughs> at this uh, point, are safety and compliance training. I, you could have a film with some kind of safety situation and check for understanding of the scenario that's presented. Um, it could be for checking for understanding, um, variety of things. Having students watch and listen um, engages other ways of learning that you can now integrate into your course um, or video quizzes. So these prompts that you create as an instructor appear at the various points that you set throughout the video and you can have uh, two different types of prompts with the interactive video. So you can have multiple choice questions or video responses. So here uh, in the top image, you can see an example of what a student might be interacting with in terms of a multiple choice question. Uh, the video is that is in, in the example is presenting um, sort of like a kinesiology example where they're checking for understanding of um, what is happening in the video in terms of a practical application. And in the lower part of the screenshot, you can see that there's also been a video prompt added. So this is where the student um, will be prompted to respond by speaking uh, to the prompt. So two very different types, different ways to check for understanding, different flexibilities there. Now, um, as Amanda asked or mentioned earlier, there might be some privacy concerns from students. So one, one thing we can offer in terms of that is students can cover their webcam so that they are, it is truly just oral as opposed to um, having their, their image shared. So uh, again, we want to have you give this a try as a student. So this will be an opportunity for you to try the very first early steps of accessing any video assignment again by going to the back into our learn sandbox or course, go to content, the interactive video assignment module, and then the interactive video assignment link. And this order of operations is really important because it can also be a reminder to you as an instructor that for every video assignment you make, you have to have a link in the content. 
or students cannot access it because the first place they access it from is from that link in the content. So this can kind of drive that home going through that process again. So we are going to ask you to, same as last time, it, turn off your mic or leave it off, um, pop over into the course and take about five minutes. The video I've uploaded is, is just one minute. Um, take about five minutes to, to try out that assignment type and then we'll bring you back at uh, looks like 22, 140 or a little tiny bit earlier if you want to come back and um, we'll debrief that again. Have fun. All right, so it's uh, 22. If we can have everybody um, back here, it looks like we have six plus, so I think we're good to go. Sure. So moving right along, um, another quick debrief, same question. Based on your experience being thrown back in um, to the interactive video assignment, what questions do you think your students might have before, during, or after completing this type of assignment. And feel free to talk to us or use the chat. Good one, Amanda. They will want to know how the multiple choice question is graded. And um, when we share with you the how-to documents for creating this as an instructor, you'll see um, the, the grading options that it breaks down to, but essentially you um, can choose the points that each one is out of. And then if you are say to add um, uh, an, a video prompt as well, then that or multiple, those are automatically um, chosen based on what you already input for the, um, for the multiple choice question. In the, that will make uh, more sense when you see it. Yeah, when you see the how-to, there's a little piece about grading that will help you explain it to the students as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Natalie shares students might wonder if the instructor has preference for having the webcam on or off. Yes, um, and that will be something that, or should be something that's definitely uh, made clear in the assignment instructions and probably also has a lot to do with your own comfort with things like academic integrity concerns and how you're using the assignment because um, personally, I think a lot of these assignment types really lend themselves well to practice and to formative assessments where having the student on camera might not be as important as if you were to use these, say, for something summative, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about those more pedagogical aspects towards the end of our, our presentation today. Cheryl had a great question about um, or a great point about the um, transcript. Now, I'm not sure if it does it within um, the videos assignment. Would you recommend doing it through stream, get the caption uh, transcript and then bringing it in? I think we. Yeah, I think that that's definitely an option, again, depending on what the course is and what you're evaluating. So if we're thinking about Fumi's example, who's using it specifically for Japanese language, for listening and for responding. Um, having the captions might not be something that she wants to use for everybody and might be something that she reserves for a special or a specific accessibility issue she's been informed of. Um, <laughs> Svetlana is saying that um, if you still don't see the submit, bu submit button, uh, wondering if <laughs> I'm getting a zero. Yeah. Um, so one thing to the, to note that is kind of good about this is that as an instructor, you can always see the students in progress work. So I'm actually helping someone in the base program, which is um, students who are um, getting their academic um, speaking, listening skills, etc. up. They uh, she right now has this problem where a couple students don't see the submit button. But because in the instructor role, she can see all of their work in progress, she can still go in and grade it and let them know it's OK. I got everything um, and we're working with the vendor right now to figure out the source of that issue. Um, from your experience, any concerns regarding integrity for this tools? Uh, is that referring ac to academic integrity? 
John, students will want to know if they can redo it before submitting or after. Yeah, great one. And there are settings uh, and you choose and as an instructor whether you want to let them retake um, a multiple choice question. And with the video, they can uh, delete it and refilm it, I think. I believe yeah. so. Well, yeah, we'll see. Um, yes. But that's the expectations that Fumi did as well to let them know that, hey, this is a one time shot because it's a summative piece versus a formative that they can retake. So expectations, John, is probably the piece there. Yeah. And uh, students wanting to know if it was received and if the quality was OK. Um, when this works as it should, they should be able to see the submission page on which they can view back exactly what they submitted. And even uh, it even allows them to make their own um, comments on it. So if they have something they want to say to you after about the video that they've submitted, they're able to do that. Um, I, have a, I have a suggestion on that piece. Maybe we can go to the instructor mode, get them working on it because we have 15 minutes left. Um, mm -hmm. And then what we'll do, Cheryl and others, is we'll take a look as instructors in the student stuff that you've sent and see uh, if the processing thing is hung up or not. And then we'll get back to you on that. And I do um, want to speak to academic integrity asthma. So we're but we're going to move on and get everybody working and then um, We'll make sure that we either talk about that or talk to that or come follow up with um, everyone again because that's a great question. So Jay is going to take control again and and let you know what's happening for the instructor side. And I'm going to go turn you all magically from students to instructors in the course. So don't do anything in the course for about two minutes. OK, great. Uh, I didn't realize I was taking control. Love it. Um, so uh, in the instructor mode, we, we're going to give you 10 minutes. We're going to get you go to that same course in a minute. Don't go there yet. She's changing roles as we speak. So um, we have in the announcement when you get there. So when you go to the course site in the announcement, there's a first uh, announcement piece that has um, three downloads. The first one is the Karen Hool video that you can download uh, and use if you don't have a video yourself to upload if you're going to do the um, interactive uh, video. So you don't have to do both. Pick one, Q&A or interactive video. And if you don't have an interactive video want to do it, the Karen Hewell one you can down, download. Likewise, there's two links there for um, the how to's on the Q&A and the uh, interactive. So download them both, have a read of the one you're going to do, and we'll get you to start doing that, following that essentially step by step guide. We're going to try to leave you on that uh, on that on your own. The thumbs up from V, I think, means that uh, we're good to go for instructor mode. Uh, again, uh, Firefox and Chrome is our best uh, in um, experience in, in terms of browsers. Mute and uh, keep the camera off and mute here. And then you'll be able to engage your camera and, and thing there and we'll, we'll use the chat again. So off you go. We'll come see you maybe at uh, we're going to check in at uh, five. Uh, pardon me, uh, 154 or something like that and see where you're at. Yeah, it looks like some people have had success in uh, at least starting to create something, so that's great. And I was checking in on some of the interactive video submissions and looked like um, that went pretty well too and listening to some of your uh, really actually really thoughtful responses to, to the poem, which you know we just threw that together as something that um, you could practice with, but now I kind of just want to extend for an hour and talk about that poem with y'all. <laughs> so that's that's cool. <laughs> just a quick little poll there. Uh, just let us know of these two types. We've had more success with the interactive video, so it might be a biased poll. However, um, which one do you see that you might use in your upcoming course, given your experience as a student and, and now playing? Uh, yeah, as instructor. So do a little vote. Uh, does everyone see it? And if you don't see it in the top, it's in the chat there. And I'm seeing we got three people responded. So in the chat, you can submit your vote. And I just showed the votes as we go. Great. Yeah, I think the Q&A, despite the hiccups, it has a lot more obvious utility to it. And it is very appealing. And it has worked really successfully for people. So 
just a bit of a learning curve and working out some some kinks. Uh, my hope is it's just that uh, knowing to engage the video and stuff. And once we've had that, when we did the interactive, that might be it. But there's a couple steps to it because you had two or three pieces. Anyway, we'll see. Not going to vote because you don't have a course. OK, well, thanks for that. I should have said not. Well, I guess neither, right? So, um, OK, uh, is it over to you, V, I think? Yep. And neither, I think I think that's great. I hope you don't feel like um, it you wasted your time by being here. It sometimes is good just to experience something and figure out, you know what? That's not for me. <laughs> it was great. Thanks, Cheryl. You did a great job. Um, so we're moving into the end of our session. We just have a minute left. I know that I can stick around for about five more minutes if anybody wants to, to ask questions. If you um, need to, if you need to go because life goes on, that's great we do have the recording uh, that will be shared back so we want to invite you at this time to um to debrief with us so uh there are some questions up on the slide right now that we'd love to hear your responses to maybe you need more time to think about it that's okay and we'll also take your questions at this time so i'm going to flip back to this debrief slide and um let you look at those, but feel free to answer them or to ask a question. And um, we'll just let you know that the slides are gonna be available in the course in an announcement coming live in about a minute. And there are resources at the end of the slideshow that you'll be able to see there. So we let's have, see some We questions. do have a few questions in here. So, um, and, and by all means, if we can answer a bongo one, but we'll try to focus on bongo two first. So, um, uh, if we can do that, Laurie, and maybe afterwards we can follow. Um, Amanda, uh, do students get feedback and can I send them a video reply? So, uh, yes, they get feedback. The video reply, I'm not sure. Really? Yep, you can do video responses in um, for, for, feedback? for video or for, for feedback. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just like in Bongo one. Um, that's one of the really cool things that you can do with the bongo video assignments. Yep. Um, I was hoping so because it's all video based, but <laughs> hopefully that helped. Um, I guess Lori has a question about bongo one. Do you want to ask that? Go for it. Yeah. See you, John. Thanks for being here, John. Okay. I had a question. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. I had a question regarding uh, the session this morning. Um, so when uh, when you grade by rubric the and you link it to part of your gradebook um it automatically sets the maximum points at 100 so we for example can you change that and make it out of whatever the um the rubric is out of. So, for example, our rubric is out of a ridiculous number 33. And uh, what we're wondering is, can we leave it at that? Or will it automatically, if the student, say, got 30 out of 33, will it automatically default to changing that to 91%? That is uh, my understanding of Bongo works on the percentage uh, piece for the final grade. And then that, so it'll be a double conversion. You'll send that 91 out of 100 to the grade book, which is out of 100, but then it's weighted at whatever you're waiting at. The percentages will still carry through, be it the whatever he got or she got of the of the mm -hmm. 32. And then, so it'll be, that's a 90, 91%. It'll be 91% in there, in the grade book, 91%, but then it'll be whatever the weighted grade is. So. I'm not sure why they convert to 100. I know for the um, Q&A one that we did when we look at grading, they did that because they're amalgamating a, a two or three question types and need to round it out of 100, so it makes sense uh, for some reason. I don't know. Uh, v, do you have any insights on the 100%? Not why? Yeah. No, not why. I just know it. it is. <laughs> and so, so just working with that in the grade book is how we get around it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I wondered about that. Um, yeah. That's fine. Uh, we'll have to do that work around as well. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks, Amanda. See you later. And um, uh, we're hopefully this helped, and we're here to help you. And Learn Help, uh, those resources, has Learn Help direct contact. Follow them up for the Bongo stuff. And uh, Victoria and I would be happy to answer questions as well. Yes. And I know Asma had a question earlier about um, academic integrity. So uh, just let me know if you're still here, and we can definitely chat about that or follow up after. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Cheryl makes a really good point Very about, fun. you know, yeah. summative versus um, formative. And if to, if you were going to use them as summative, including them as formative somewhere else in the course before you get there. Super, super good idea. And that's a good practice pedagogically for anything when you have a, 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 a summative at the end of be it a term test or a final. However, you're testing and doing things there, it's definitely practice with formative as you get to it. So they're used to answering those written questions or multiple choice questions or essay questions or whatever it is. So good point all around. Uh, thanks for that. Okay, bye all. Bye everyone. Thank thanks. you for being